In our collection, we have one Air Force One. Uh, it's right behind me here. It's a VC-118. This was a uh, military conversion of a Douglas DC-4, and this was widely used in the 1950s and early 1960s. Uh, principally, this aircraft was used and favored by President Johnson. Uh, President Kennedy was on it, but only a handful of times, uh, maybe about a half a dozen. Uh, President Kennedy vastly preferred flying on the 707s whenever he could. Uh, he had suffered a serious back injury during the Second World War when his uh, torpedo boat was, uh, was sunk by the Japanese. And the vibrations and rough sort of handling characteristics of uh, the, uh, the VC-118 really aggravated his back. So whenever possible, he, he avoided flying on it and flew on the more comfortable 707s. Um, when he did use this airplane, it was uh, mainly because the, uh, the airports that he was uh, planning to go into couldn't handle the larger aircraft. So although you know our, our, our volunteers and, and other staff like to talk it up as being a President Kennedy aircraft, technically it is, but its, its strongest association is with President Johnson, who flew it extensively and made personalizations and modifications to it. So another huge favorite with visitors and guests here and has been kind of an icon of uh, American Air Force uh, technology and ability is the SR-71 Blackbird spy plane. Uh, this aircraft was originally designed in the 50s by the famous Kelly Johnson at the Lockheed Skunk Works in Palmdale, California. Yeah, the, uh, the SR-71, not this one in particular, um, but an SR-71 holds the record for coast-to-coast -coast flight, I think. Uh, it was LA to New York in under an hour. So, we're standing here underneath uh, one of... This is the oldest aircraft in our collection. It's a Fleet Model 2 biplane, uh, first built in 1927, and it was acquired by a local family and company, uh, the Gilpins, who operated the first commercial air service in the Tucson region in uh, 1929. And this uh, aircraft flew uh, passenger flights in the region, uh, did some airmail flying, and was given to us by the family in the early 1980s, not long after we opened here. So we're currently standing in our most recent uh, facility expansion. This is um, built in the last year or so, in 2010-2011. Uh, and we've added 20,000 square feet here, as well as a new restaurant. Um, so what we're featuring in this gallery here are some of the more modern aircraft in our collection. But these are all aircraft that have um, sort of pop pop culture ties. Okay. So uh, behind me in the new gallery here, uh, which is rapidly becoming a, a big favorite with our, our visitors, probably uh, rivaling the interest that the SR-71 generates, is our Thunderbird F-4 Phantom. Uh, this, th this Phantom flew with the Thunderbirds from the 1970 to 1974 show season, and in the 73-74 show season it was uh, ship number seven, so this was the narrator's aircraft. Um, the narrator flies with the team and calls out the moves and maneuvers. Yeah, uh, cues the team, but also generates um, color commentary that's broadcast to the crowd below, so they can, you know, experience more uh, more intimately what the team's doing. Also, in our new gallery, and another big crowd favorite that everybody recognizes is the F, uh, the Grumman F-14 Tomcat. Uh, this aircraft type recently retired from the U.S. Navy, so they're no longer in service. They're all either uh, retired for scrapping, uh, but 90 examples have been preserved in museums and VFWs and other locations around the world. Our particular uh, F-14 here is painted up in the uh, colors that it wore while it was with VF-111, the uh, Sundowners, during uh, their 1978-79 era, <clears throat> when it was based on the USS Kitty Hawk. Um, an interesting feature of this airplane is it was at um, uh, the uh, airfield when uh, the movie Top Gun was filmed. It didn't actually engage in any of the flying sequences, but it was seen in the background and the backdrop of the, of the movie. 